like this whole training thing's ridiculous. I have a degree. It's not like stormwater is that big of a deal anyway. Sometimes a shark looks right in here. The thing about a shark is he's got lifeless eyes. Black eyes, like a doll's eyes. So you think stormwater management is small potatoes, hmm? Do you mean? want your streets flooded? Do you want your kids swimming in oil and salt? Do you want to take fresh fish with your own bare hands? Do you ever see jobs? I haven't. Get in the truck. I'm going to teach you all about our stormwater management plan. Ever heard of an MS-4? Of course you haven't. Well, we own and operate it. It's a municipal separate storm sewer system in case that fancy degree of yours didn't teach you anything. Oh good, you're buckling up. That's good. Yeah. So what all of that means is that our stormwater pipes aren't connected to sanitation pipes. Now that means that all that lovely storm runoff flows directly into our lakes and streams. So I guess it doesn't take an explosion to kill Jaws now, does it? <laughs> Wait, I thought you haven't now, seen Now this is it. my truck. A couple rules about this truck. Rule number one, it's my truck. Nobody drives this truck but me. Got it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And nobody touches my radio. Rule number two. Now, to reduce those pollutants, we have some best management practices, or BMPs, to follow under our state's NPDES permit. Yeah, I know that one. Oh, you actually know? Did you know that one? Great! Do you know about structural and vegetative BMPs, or operational BMPs? Smart guy? Yeah. Structural and vegetative BMPs identify devices, or natural systems that are constructed to protect, treat, convey, control, or infiltrate storm waters. Operational BMPs are things that we do on our job that can impact stormwater quality, such as uh, cutting the grass or washing our vehicles. Did you know all that? Yeah, I actually did know that. All right, the first line of defense is the catch basin, which leads into the sewer. Normally, we would fill out these inspection forms, but today, I'm just going to show you around. Get a banana. Where is this banana? is the catch basin. It's a concrete underground structure fitted with a slotted grate designed to collect and convey stormwater away into underground pipes. They're also meant to catch solids like sand, oils, and organic matter, like this trash. Why would you... See what I mean? And wintertime is one of the worst offenders for things like road salts, sediments, and when the snow melts, hidden trash. That's when we have to call in the big guns. The Factor Trash! Now clean up after yourself, because I've got something to show you. Hey, no, this is your banana. The pumping mechanism in this Vactor truck removes the majority of the water and foreign items from the sump. Now, each community has its own catch basin inspection and cleaning schedule in their stormwater management plan. So, I hear that there's other practices in place to help encourage infiltration to lighten the load on the stormwater sewer system. Well, oh, I would like to tell you that you're right if I didn't love to tell you that you were wrong. What? It's time that I showed you a few other things a greenhorn needs to see on his first day. So, uh... No. No, no. Bad. You can't just hit people. Now, a rain garden... A rain is... garden is a depression with natural vegetation and highly permeable soil to capture and treat runoff. Some even have underdrains. 
Do you know what happens to the boy that grew too impatient? Neither do I, but let's not put that to the test. Okie Let me introduce you to some members of my family just so we can save some time. <sighs> oh, you are a lonely man, aren't you? Hmm. <laughs> this is a detention pond. She's designed to temporarily store storm water runoff and slowly release it through an outlet. <laughs> you mean like a, like a re-tension pond? No, 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 absolutely not. No, no, those aren't designed with an outlet. Oh, this sweet little vegetated swale is a flat bottomed channel with plants growing in it to convey storm water and allow infiltration. It can even replace a traditional curb and gutter system. Oh, oh, isn't she cute? Now, oh, this is a, a buffer strip. It's a strip of vegetation between a paved area and a body of water that filters out trash and metals and oils. <laughs> oh, oh, and this is my darling infiltration basin, or a leaching basin, which is similar to a catch basin, but isn't connected to any pipe, so the water infiltrates into the ground. Finally, the secondary containment for storing hazardous and regulated substances, right? Don't take this from me. These sweet angels protect groundwater, surface water, and soils, and reduce worker exposure to these kinds of contaminants. If these guys are not in tip-top shape, then we are in a boatload of trouble. Is that another Jaws reference? I have no idea what you're talking about. Let's get some food. It's gonna be a long day. That's a nice worthy meal. Oh, no, 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 my friend. We have a lot more to get through today. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Real good. Ah. Mike, oil. Yeah, oil. No, Mike, there's, uh, there's oil on the ground. Beans. Yeah, that was uh, intentional because I wanted to teach you about oil clean up. Oh, just go get the spell kit from the back of the truck. Looks like I'm being punished. Hi. So you use an absorbent pad like this, or a loose absorbent like cat litter, to sop up as much of the oil as possible. Now the waste needs to be disposed of properly, of course. So... That reminds me. What about that pothole over there? How about those faded paint lines? What about that cracked pavement? Don't you think we should do something about it right now? I probably you would be really wrong. Should. Absolutely wrong. What's All the weather right. going to be like? I mean, if we have to be conscious of the weekly it's... weather forecast. These repairs have to take place during a dry week. Otherwise, the rain's going to come and wash away all of the chemicals into a storm drain and further harm our waterways. Yeah, you're ah. right. All right. I'm sorry. Mike. Do you see that thing down there? The stream sweeper? Exactly. Street sweeping is a requirement of every jurisdiction that holds an MS4 permit. It's a part of our stormwater management plan. Uh, and the uh, prioritization and intervals of the street sweeping are laid out there as well. Should probably keep a record of uh, where we've swept and how much debris we've collected. You're all right, kid. So when do you suspect is the perfect time to street sweep? Dry weather. Collect the sweepings. Dispose of them properly. Wow, well, babe. Yeah. Come on, let's take a walk. Right of ways and other properties like cemeteries and parks are our job to maintain too. That means vegetation removal, herbicide and pesticide application, watering, mowing, fertilizing, and all of these have the potential to harm water quality. So I heard that you have to be certified to apply pesticides and you're not allowed to operate under your boss's certification. Is that true? Yeah, it sure is. Looking good, Tom. 
With fertilizers, you have to consider a few things. They must be applied according to state and local laws and always to the application rate specified on the label. The more fertilizer, the greener the grass. No. Only the lowest effective amount. And make sure the wind speeds are low so you don't blow the stuff all over the place. Also, make sure it's going to be dry for a few days. Otherwise, the rain will wash it all away. Yeah, that makes sense. When we plant vegetation, we like to pick plants that are native to the area. Uh, native plants require less maintenance, like watering and trimming. They've got long root systems that can be used to stem erosion, and uh, they're better at allowing for water infiltration, which lessens stormwater runoff. When it comes time to mow, use a mulching mower in flat areas. Finally, when mowing near a body of water, never mow all the way to the edge of the water. A buffer of vegetation around surface waters can help with flooding, erosion, and provide a habitat for all sorts of critters. Ah. There we go. Look at this. Any other non-mulched clippings, pruned branches, or yard waste needs to be disposed of at the yard waste disposal site. This kind of landscape waste should never go near a storm drain or any other waterway system. You got that? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Sheesh. All right. Let's go. Do you have any idea why I brought you out here? I don't know. Jaws Marathon? I'm, what? No. Oh. No. Okay. Imagine that it's winter. When we plow the snow from the roads, we want to put it on a vegetated area so that when it melts, all of the road salt and sediments carried away by the plow gets filtered through the soil. So there's no runoff into our lakes and streams. I could hug you right now. <laughs> but keep your distance. I don't want it. That's just great. I leave for five minutes and look what I see. What do you see, college kid? Well, there's a lot of salt on the ground. And in case the snow melts or there's a rain event, you know, uh, well, the salt will go to a storm drain. Is that your official prognosis, doctor? Yes, nurse. I think it is. A complete waste of salt. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this is what we call a trail out. Bad news. Um, let's get back on the road and I'll have one of my boys clean this up. Salting, sanding, and de-icing are necessary evil, so to speak, in this climate. But the salt and de still need to be prevented from entering our storm sewers or surface water to the maximum extent possible. So we can use the minimum amount required to get the job done. Aw, you're learning. <laughs> uh, we still need to wash the trucks during the winter months. Uh, wash water from trucks that carry salts and de-icers needs to be discharged into a sanitary sewer or collected and hauled off-site. Got that? Yeah. Good. Uh, bottom line, trucks carry toxic hydrocarbons, uh, oils, grease, a lot of other nasty stuff. Even if you do have a designated and clearly marked wash station that drains into a sanitary sewer, you should still be using a phosphate-free biodegradable detergent. Got that? Got it. Vehicles require a lot of different liquids and materials to function. We don't pour any kind of liquid down any drain, period. We have waste and recycling drums that are properly stored in secondary containment structures. Drain the excess oil and then recycle the filters. Also, recycle cracked and dead batteries. This is very important. Chemicals and other materials should be stored in their original containers in flammable storage lockers and labeled clearly, clearly labeled. Use secondary containment as required. Keep all materials in proper condition. Also, they have to be inventory and periodically inspected. Because we don't want any of this stuff damaged and leaking into the storm drain. Okay? Okay. Okay. A lot of solid waste can be recycled, and it should be. The less garbage we've got piling up in our landfills, the better. 
Also, dumpsters and bins should either have a lid or be in a covered facility like this one. Otherwise, next time it rains, it's just going to wash all that trash water right into our storm drains. Material storage is just as important as proper disposal. Raw materials like this have to be stored inside or covered, as in this facility. And if anything should spill, you have to report it to your supervisor and have it addressed immediately. <sighs> so, a lot to take in in one day, huh? One you bit. ready? Yeah, I think so. Come on, I'll drive you back. I am so proud of you. Man, you learned a lot today, kid. You are going to make a great addition to the team. Thanks, man. Mm -hmm. Hey, so does that mean I can finally, Still uh... No. Absolutely not. I will never trust your taste. You know, I love Hooper in that movie. I mean, Quint's okay, but Hooper's where it's at. I'm willing to bet that he was about two years away from retirement. Gonna cash in his 401k, collect that pension. He really loved his stormwater management. You really haven't seen that movie, have you? What movie? 